you remember your first career home run? Here. <laughs> yeah, I remember my first career home run. It was actually off of my teammate now, who is Paul Skeens. What do you remember about February 21st, 2021? <laughs> was that the day we won? I remember I didn't hit very well. And I remember Dylan Cruz hit that ball off me. The 0 1 pitch slammed into left field. Get out Going of here. back, this ball is gone. And Dylan Cruz with a solo shot. It's the Tigers within one here in the bottom of the ninth. I remember like checking Twitter after, and Alex Bregman said he was going to be 1 1 in 2023. And I, I mean, I still remember that. And is he, I mean, is he wrong? I would never thought in my entire life that that would be my teammate in, in two years after that. So, you know, I love Paul and he's, he's a great guy, great teammate, one of the biggest leaders on our team now. And uh, to see that he's here experiencing what I'm experiencing now here at LSU, I'm happy for him and it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm glad he's in the, in the same jersey as me now. I faced him my freshman year, gave up that home run. And then I faced him at USA after my freshman year and I don't think I got him out. Then I came here and I don't remember what his stats were off me, but I got him out a few times. But it was cool, because I'm facing, you know, Dylan. It's very rare, you know, to have talents like this in college baseball, period, but to have both of them on the same team at the same time is, I've never seen that before, and uh, makes me a very happy coach. <laughs> Hey, here we go. Uh, Skeens, lights out. Great job. Okay, gave us a chance to win some of the game. But we needed uh, we needed some positive mojo and, and getting character hitting. So Dylan Cruz, three run bomb. Thank you, guys. Let's, let's see what I want to know today. Let's get it tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. He's not a talker. He's not a talker. <laughs> you know, in Dylan's case, he's just very committed to his routine and very committed to his process that makes him who he is as a player. And he doesn't speak often, but when he does, it really commands the room. One of my biggest goals this year was to lead more by, you know, verbally, instead of lead more by example. Tommy, thanks. And uh, it's been great. You know, I've, all I've been told is that when you speak, people tend to listen. There was a great Tiger crowd earlier today, and it appears many went to grab a bite, possibly a brew or three, and they're making their way back into the box for tonight's deciding game three. And that will bring Mr. Dylan Cruz to the plate. Dylan batting 667 through two games this weekend, six of nine at the plate with three. center field that can run like a deer that hits the ball harder than anybody we've seen in quite some time. I was fortunate enough to uh, coach Carlos Correa and I've told people one of the greatest things about Carlos is not only is he a great player but you know he made 35 million dollars a year we were with him. I, I told everybody you know 20 he was worth 20 million in the clubhouse. Uh, just the way he was able to go around and talk to guys and lead them and give them encouragement, but then also be hard on them when they needed to, when somebody needed to be hard on them other than a coach. And <clears throat> I would make the exact same statement about Paul Skeens. So we have a manager whose mom makes custom shirts, and we, I just send him a, a picture probably the week before or two weeks before, and she just, you know, presses it on a shirt, and I wear it to warm up, cut the sleeves off, wear it to warm up. And I found a Cade Beloso shirt on the internet, bought it, probably spent like 45 bucks on it. I'm like, this is cool. And it just sat in my room for a few weeks. And then I'm like, screw it, I'm gonna wear it. And wore it one day and like cut the sleeves off. And I'm like going down to the pitcher's lab while he's hitting BP and he like sees it. He can't get off from hitting BP that early. So he like finishes his round and then runs down to the pitching lab. And he's like, hey, stand up. And I'm like, I just show him the shirt. And it's just a weird shirt, but he like gave me a big hug. And I'm like, this is cool. Like. We're going to win this game, and I think I just made his day. Last week it was Ty. Ty saw it this week, and he, like, he was like giddy. It was awesome. Whatever Paul's given us on the mound is obviously really good and phenomenal. 
but he's given us just as much value or worth in the clubhouse as he is on the field. Excellence, you know, would be the word that I would use to describe him. Like, he's always chasing this high bar of excellence. I'm a vocal guy. You know, looking at Dylan, he's not the same way. Uh, Ty isn't the same way. But I'm, I'm a guy who, you know, if I see something, I'm going to say something because I just, it's kind of how I was raised, and I'm not a patient guy in, in a lot of ways. So I don't know that I would describe myself as ruthless, but I can I can definitely see it. I would say when I'm competing, that's that's definitely the vibe that, you know, you're not going to beat me. Here in the last weekend of March, this matchup was circled by virtually every Tiger fan on the planet as Tony Botello and the Tennessee Volunteers cruise into town. Paul Skeens looks in. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Three straight strikes. 100 miles an hour with all three. In the first inning, I'm going to be honest, I'm trying to hit 105 every pitch. I'm throwing the ball as hard as I can. Just trying to make the hitters look stupid. My mindset is I'm better than you. You're not going to beat me, especially in the first inning. Just got to execute my pitches, and, and it's going to be a, a win for the Tigers on Friday night. The one, two, uh, getting to go around. Struck him out with the off-speed pitch. They don't want to cruise. Hit streak moves to 24 straight games. Swing and a miss. One, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Eight strike out of the night. It's the most controlled rage I've ever seen in my life. It's like thunderbolts coming out of his hand every time he throws the ball. I truly believe every time he walks on the mound, you're going to see something historic. They're on their feet. The 0-2. 